One of the matters of the city for me in this area has been to deal with educating our community. I think one of the problems we have often is that individuals in our communities don't know fully all the things that go on in a community like this as far as the governmental agencies are concerned. And then secondly, engagement. I think that getting the people engaged in their community and being a part of the body politic, asking questions, and giving answers to questions that may be asked of them. I would describe myself as a servant leader because as a servant, you are servant first, and that means you're prepared to help the citizens. It's not about what you are getting ready to do, but who you're serving. And I believe one of my old phrases was, you know, if, if I could help somebody along the way, if I could help them to be the best them they can be, then that's my goal. And there's an old adage that says, I'm called to fulfill a service job, which has made all of my powers engaged to do my master's will to serve this present age. And I think in many cases, serving the age that I'm in, this group of people is most important to me. Why did I step up to become a leader in this community? One of the things was conversations with others in the community who told me they thought I'd be a good person to do the job as a mayor or in many capacities, you will be a good leader. And as a result of it, I chose to lead with the mindset that we can make Wake Cross a better place. I've written several books that have led into why I do what I do as far as service is concerned. And the first of those books is entitled Trusting God to Supply Your Needs and its perspectives on exercising your faith. And throughout the book, it just talks about steps, processes, principles that can be utilized to better you as your belief systems. One of the thoughts I have is you behave like you believe. And if you believe a certain way, you behave a certain way. And that was what the first book was really about, trusting God and putting Him first and foremost. The second book is called Leader, Can You Stand the Test? And in that book, I'm looking at about eight different characters in the Bible who have different perspectives. They're able to do certain things. One, they may be faithful or obedient, selfless when it comes down to leadership. And I believe these are some of the attributes that make me a servant leader because you can't lead first, you need to serve first, listen first, understand first. The third book is entitled, well, I love it, it's, it's because, Just Because God Said It. And Just Because God Said It is a journal that I've written for decades. It's about two or three decades of writing of things people have spoken to me. And it has been an impetus or somewhat of a platform to step off of or into to do a great work. One of the plans that I have to improve Wake Cross is to work toward making certain that the students who live in the city of Wake Cross and the people who live in the city of Wake Cross are well equipped. Well, how do you do that? You take individuals who are at a certain age and you begin to train them about how things work politically. And so not only do I do job acquisition skills and teach people how to prepare themselves for a job, whether they go on that job, get the job, advance in that job, and promote that job. Lastly, I believe that as a workforce development needs to be taught in the area and trained to our people. And there's a youth mayor's council that I've created in the last year or so, and we're working toward creating more events of this sort where the students are involved and are able to come back to their community to give back to the same society that they have grown up in. Well, one of the better things to do when you're trying to help someone find out who they are and what they can do, you have to tell them, first off, be yourself and allow them to be themselves and find out what their particular strengths are. I usually give a little personality quiz to my students in the classroom to find out what it is that their personality requires and their careers. And I push them toward that end. One of the things we do in the class is have them to define their name. Your name actually tells you what you will become or what you can do. And so we work toward promoting, pushing, and prompting them through their, their name and also through their personalities. My plans for the future, 
I have several plans for the future, actually. One of those plans will be regarding how to take some of the information that we have gleaned and gathered throughout this time that I've been in office as mayor and also walking alongside the job as a professor and putting those two things together and creating maybe a book about our town and our city that will encompass all of the things that I've encountered, one, and also to talk about some historical events and activities that have taken place prior to my sitting in the seat as the mayor. Along with that, there may be some other possibilities that may come along the way, and I'm looking forward to addressing any issues as they bring themselves before me. One is economic development, and I believe that we need to develop the setup in the city where we're able to see more industry come into our community. Sometimes we, we have in mind what we want to do, but we're just gonna have to make certain that there are all kinds of things in place. Not only the workforce itself, the people who go, but we wanna have training for them. And then we want to make sure that when people come into a community, that the things they need are present. Not only the people, the workforce itself, but proper lands and different things of that sort. Whereas when they come in, they're not concerned about whether we have it or not. It is already present. Another thing that I'm thinking about was not only economic development, but and we mentioned workforce development alongside that, but there's a, another side of this thing that I think is important. And that is for individuals in our community to understand the power that they have within themselves to promote and to push their own community. Speak well of yourself, speak well of your community. Talk about what we can do, not what we can't do. We understand there are many things that we have difficulty with, but let's emphasize our strengths over our weaknesses. And what is the strength of this community? Service, helping other people, working together as a team, and being kind to one another while we work. These are the things that I think will be most important that we need to drill down into and delve in. And I believe more so that as we do that, we'll see a community grow and become a stronger community. I believe we're great now, but we can become greater. One experience that I've had was to deal with the discipline of my body and making sure that I eat properly. You know, you can serve other people, but that does not necessarily mean you overlook yourself. And then, unless I'm able to deal with me first, then I'm not able to be a good leader. I believe in order to serve a person, I need to be equipped and I need to be properly set in place, eating proper food, drinking proper uh, products that I can use to supplement my vitamins and build myself. My plans to improve Waycross, one is to create a youth council, a mayor's youth council. And in that mayor's youth council, it would give the young people an opportunity to learn what government is all about, actually sitting in those seats, serving as a mayor or as a council person. And then after having done that, having the opportunity to share that information with other upcoming youth, and it, I think it would serve as a driver to bring people to the community as well as beautify or whatever the goals and visions of that youth group may be to make it a better way across because we need to have more voices at the table than just those who've always been there. Otherwise, we'll never grow and become what we can become. And I think that's one way we can make Waycross a better place. Another thing aside from the Mayor's Youth Council, I'm thinking through some of the other works that I've been trying to do, and that's write things and put things down. A history not written is a history not lived or unknown to others. So I believe that we need to put it in writing, and that's a goal that I have to help Better Way Cross. Go back, read what we've done, see what we have done, and then look at what we can possibly do. And I think the, the coupling of the Youth Council and the writing of those materials will create a better atmosphere for our community. Service to me first needs to be defined. It is how you reach out to another person and connect with them. I believe that when we connect, we draw people in. Connection also brings correction to some behaviors. If I connect with you, then I learn things from you. You teach me what I don't know about things that I should know. 
And I think that when we reach out to the greater community beyond Waycross and reach into other regions and other cities and other counties, we're able to see growth because exposure to those things in those other locations brings expansion to our minds. Exposure, expansion, and then it also brings another thing, elimination. It eliminates those things that can sometimes be hindrances to the growth of a community. You may have a resource I do not have. You may have something I do not understand, but you can show me that resource, train me with that resource, and I would not have known that I could do the things that I can do, but because of you, I'm a greater person. So service is reaching beyond the walls of your, your place and going beyond. I think there was a, a passage where it says, you go to Judea, Samaria, and to the other most parts of the world, where those three sectors, you have to be able to start at home, yes, Love begins at home, but it has to spread abroad. It has to go out beyond the walls that you're presently in. So I see that as being something we can do. And thankfully, we in the city of Waycross have been, been a part of the Georgia Municipal Association, which gives us opportunity to join in with other cities throughout the state of Georgia. But we're also a part of the National League of Cities, which also is just a bigger, broader realm of people who help us to find out what can we use in the city of Waycross to help with our infrastructure? What can we use in the city of Waycross to help with the funding and the grant monies that may be available to us? And how were you able to do that? So it gives us opportunity not only to serve others, but we too benefit by service to other people. And I appreciate the opportunity to serve our community, not only within the city, in the county, but within the region, the state, and the nation.